I wonder what we're talking about today. Could it be cell division? Yeah, you're right. So I'm going to break this up into a couple different parts. Hopefully I don't overwhelm you too much, but cell division, there's a lot to take in, right? Piece of cake though. Uh huh. Yeah. No, it will start to make sense, I promise. Um, but to start us off, how about a short little video? I've read someone say to you, it's in your genes. You weren't talking about your pants. Ha! No, it meant you were born that way. It's in your genes. Now, genes tell your cells what to do. Like, you, you're a stomach cell. You, you're a brain cell. You, you're gonna have brown eyes and a big nose. Now, genes are made of DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid. What? Deoxyribonucleic acid. What? Deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay. And DNA molecules are very long molecules that have chemicals on them in a sequence, in a special order. Now, parts of DNA molecules are what we call genes. Now, DNA molecules are packed in your cells in something called chromosomes. Now, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. You get 23 from your mom and 23 from your dad. That's, uh... Um, 46? 46. Uh -huh. Now, all plant and animal cells have chromosomes. They have different numbers depending on which plant or animal you're dealing with. DNA is pretty cool when you think about it. In fact, thinking's in your genes, too. Okay, so that might be it. I can't remember now. You're like... Hmm, first of all, why did she start off with genes and chromosomes? And what better way to start off than with Bill Nye? But when we talk about genes and chromosomes, that's when we actually talk about um, cell division because we are dividing those genes, those chromosomes. We're replicating cells. Um, so that plays in a lot. So we are going to talk about genes and a little bit of genetics. But so. Let's kind of reiterate good old um, Bill Nye. He talked about DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, and I actually like this picture here. It's kind of a little um, cartoon joke, whatever. I'll climb up this strand of DNA to see where my life takes me. But it's very true because it's kind of like this path, this road that says what's going to happen in our lives. Because it, according to our genes is what can happen, what what traits we're going to get first off, but ultimately what's going to happen in the end. If there's any kind of mutations in this DNA, it can lead to diseases, um, or it can actually start off as diseases as well. It depends on where that code is, okay? So it's really important that we know a little bit about our DNA, and obviously we can look at our parents and see a lot because we get a lot of stuff passed down. Okay, so here is a picture of a lovely chromosome. I really like this picture because um, I'm going to talk about what a chromosome is in just a second, but you can see this DNA within it. Now, that's not exactly what it looks like, okay? DNA is actually coiled up really tight, and you'll see a picture of that in a second. But your chromosomes have this tightly coiled DNA, and here is where basically all of the genes are, are kept, and you're going to figure out what is going on with you and why you have this and why you have that but they're tightly wound in these chromosomes, and the chromosomes have a lot to do with cell division. So, hang on to that. All right. Now, the instructions for all sorts of cool things in your cells come with DNA. That's what DNA is. So it's these instructions on, just like Bill Nye said, your eye color, your hair color, you know, a little bit about your personality. Um, your, uh, some of your inheritances come from, you know, your parents, but that ultimately is in your DNA. So, lots of cool things that happen. Okay, so let's go on to genes. Genes are units containing crazy amounts of information. Okay, eye color, all sorts of traits. Anything you think about. If you can roll your tongue. If you can, if you have a widow's peak, which I do right here. Um, all sorts of genes basically contain the, that information for what makes you, you. Okay, let's look at this picture, which I kind of like. It kind of... Um, breaks it down a little bit for us. So you have you, your person, okay? That's you, and within you, you have trillions and trillions of cells, okay? We've learned about the cells, we've learned about the, the components. So let's take the nucleus. The nucleus, remember, is the control center. And in the nucleus is where you have your chromosomes. Okay, so taking from here, we're going to here. Here's the chromosome. And as you can see then, your chromosome, and actually you have <clears throat> sister chromatids, but your chromosome is tightly wound DNA. You 
you see as it unwinds right here, you have these histones, which are proteins, and the DNA coils around it, okay? And then if you uncoil it even more, you come up with this right here, and you can actually unwind your double helix strand, okay? The double helix is the DNA, and you have these different base pairs, which we'll talk about actually um, in the genetic unit. We're not going to go into DNA too specifically quite yet, but just know that this is where you find all of your genes and all the codes for who you are and what you know, what you've become, what you are, what you do, all that stuff. Okay, so it's kind of cool. All right, so here's yet another picture of chromosomes. I think these are really cool pictures. These are actual pictures of chromosomes with an electron microscope. And within these chromosomes, which you can't see, tightly wrapped DNA containing all of your genetic material right here, okay? Um, I don't know why I have a question mark there. There's no question mark. That's what it is. It's crazy. It's cool. Um, so that's a little bit about your chromosomes, okay? All right, now, back to the chromosome. So duplicated chromosomes are called chromatids. They're held together by a centromere. So if you notice right here, and I'll kind of zoom in a little bit, um, you have two sister chromatids, okay, that make up here, and then they're connected here in the middle by a centromere, okay? So you're always going to see that, except for when in replication, when these um, sister chromatids basically break apart, and we'll show that. But you are replicating these chromosomes in each cell when we talk about one of the types of cell division, okay? So that's kind of a little bit more about it. All right, now, here is kind of a basic look of what your chromosomes might look like. Um, but they are very disorganized in this picture, and I'm going to talk about where the organization comes into play. But they look like these little, they're not necessarily colored, but they look like um, these little kind of gummy worms. That's what I think of. But they're matching pairs, okay? We have pairs of chromosomes, 23 to be exact, okay? Um, again, like I think you heard in Bill Nye, every organism has a set number of chromosomes, and they differ. So for humans, we have 23 pairs. For other organisms, it varies. Now, chromosomes are analyzed by organisms um, and organizing in them into a karyotype. A karyotype is basically when you, and I'll show you a picture right here as I explain it, a karyotype basically takes all of these chromosomes and puts them into their pairs. And then you can actually analyze them further and see kind of what's going on here. So if you notice, this is actually a normal karyotype, okay? And you can see that there are 23 pairs here, the 23rd being the sex chromosomes, okay? So basically, you have um, two of each, okay? And each of these does something different. Obviously, you have bigger chromosomes, the one, two, three, four, all the way through kind of seven, um, are fairly large. And then they get smaller down here, okay? So each of these chromosomes does something different and many, many, many different things. So a gene for your eye color may be found way in here, you know, so it just depends. And I, to be honest, don't know all of those where those genes are found. Um, go ask a geneticist. I'm just a high school science teacher. No, just kidding. There's some boys that you can find out. They have um, these maps that show where all these different genes are actually found on your chromosomes. So it's kind of cool. So let's compare. Let's look at the male versus the female. And I'm going to kind of make this a little bit larger here so you can see this. Um, if you notice, let's look at the male first. So you have, again, two pairs of each of these chromosomes, but down here when you come to the sex chromosome, you have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. Anytime you would see that, you're always going to have a male, okay? Um, when you go to the female here, and I'll pull this up up here, you have two X chromosomes. So that's what makes us male versus female, is females have two X chromosomes, while the males have an X and a Y, okay? Um, so you can instantly see the difference there. There are some genetic disorders where, you know, maybe some babies have been born with three X chromosomes. Um, a lot of serious, serious things come from that. So you don't ever want an extra chromosome. You don't ever want to be missing a chromosome. If you're missing a chromosome, typically that baby will not survive. Once in a while, you'll have an extra chromosome where those children can survive, okay? And there are, um, some things that I want to show you, like here is Down syndrome. Can anyone see the difference there? Let's make that a little bit larger. So if you look closely, you'll notice that there's something wrong here. You have two pairs, two pairs, two pairs going through, going through. Oh, we call this trisomy 21. There are three chromosomes on the 21st chromosome, okay? 
something that people can live with. A lot of times that's too much genetic um, information where if you would have had three chromosomes on the first chromosome, that baby would not be able to survive. But trisomy 21, you can survive, okay? We all know a lot of people that have Down syndrome and they live pretty normal lives. But obviously there are some definite things that happen when you have three chromosomes. So I wanted to show you the difference and sometimes when you have those genetic abnormalities, what can happen? All right, so let's go into sexual or asexual reproduction. I'm going to give you an overall basis, and then I'm going to um, cut this off and we'll stop um, part one. But sexual or asexual, and I kind of make jokes like, huh, sex or no sex, because asexual means not, not having sex. So you can actually reproduce with not having sex. Interesting, right? Well, we don't have to go into that. Um, as far as what you and I might think about. But when we think about asexual versus sexual reproduction, that those two do exist, okay? So sexual reproduction doesn't really mean having sex. We're not talking about sex ed right now, okay? So just, just hold your horses there. We're not getting into that. Maybe next semester when we talk about the reproduction system. But we are talking about combining genetic information to produce offspring. Okay? So more of a general term, when we talk about sexual reproduction, we're talking about the combining of this genetic information. And then when we get into that, that's called meiosis. So we'll get into that in part three. So producing offspring through gen genetic information being kind of swapped, that's sexual reproduction. Okay, but sometimes we don't always have sexual reproduction. Okay, sometimes we just have binary, or we have um, asexual reproduction where you have budding, okay? But one of the types of reproduction is binary fission. Binary fission occurs only in prokaryotes. It's a very basic form of cell reproduction, okay? One single chromosome is copied. Pretty easy, right? So binary fission, actually, when we talk about this, I'm gonna show you this picture here, takes about 15 minutes to do. Hmm, interesting, right? So you get a completely new organism in 15 minutes. That's pretty fast. All right, kind of like fast food. Okay, so when you have the cell, you have the chromosome in here. Okay, this is a prokaryote. So let's take, for instance, like a bacteria. You have DNA replication where that chromosome is replicated, and then all of a sudden, whoosh, it splits off. Okay, so those cells split, and you have two new cells. That happens very rapidly. If you guys have ever seen, um, like, maybe a smear on an auger plate, you have these little circular plates here and you can squirt, not squirt, you kind of um, rub bacteria. Not that you would do this, but I used to do a lab in high school where we would take our um, swab different areas of a room, maybe the telephone, and see how much bacteria grows. Well, you take these little nutrient auger plates and you basically can, um, these auger plates are nutrients for bacteria. So if you swab something and you think bacteria is on there, you put it in a nice little dark warm place and all of a sudden the next day you see these huge bacteria colonies. Bacteria reproduce exponentially, very quickly, okay? So basically, when we talk about binary fission, this is a very fast way to reproduce, okay? Now, our cells definitely reproduce pretty quickly, but not exponentially like um, bacteria in, when we talk about binary fission. So it's a very easy splitting off. So you have your chromosome, it replicates. You have cytokinesis, which we'll talk about, but then ultimately you have two cells very shortly after. Okay, so an overview, and then we're going to um, stop for part one. Okay, so cell division. The first thing I want you guys to know about cell division, multicellular organisms copy their chromosomes before cell division, not during. So that's a big thing. So we'll talk about when that happens, but keep that in mind. Okay, and then the nucleus divides, distributing the chromosomes into two equal groups. Lovely, right? You don't want one with like half the genetic information run and the other one with double Okay, you actually want it into two equal groups of that genetic information. And then the cytoplasm divides, each part taking a nucleus, leaving with two cells, not, not smaller, not with less genetic information, not missing any organelles. They divide and they each take a nucleus and they have their own cells. Okay, so there's cell division. So we are, we're going to get this party started in part two. So we'll see you back for that.